The modern main battle tank is known for its balance, reliability, advanced technology, and high cost. It combines the strengths of various tank types, the firepower and armor of a heavy tank, the weight of a medium tank, and the mobility of a light tank. It is used by the armed forces of 20 countries worldwide. The design of this model began in 1967, after the failure of the joint West Germany-US MBT-70 tank project. The development was carried out under the Vergoldeter Leopard, Gilded Leopard, program by Porsche. A year later, the company Krauss Maffei AG started working on a similar project called Keiler Bohr, drawing on the research from the cancelled German-American program. Two years later, the German Ministry of Defense forced these companies to collaborate on a single project. The first prototype was created in 1969, ET-01, followed by another a year later, ET-02. These prototypes cost the budget 30 and 32 million marks, respectively. Porsche designed the chassis, Wegmann & Co. the turret, and Telefunken the gun stabilization system, while Krauss Maffei was responsible for the assembly. In 1971, the model was officially named Leopard 2, and intensive testing began, involving changes to its design, testing different hulls and turrets. The accelerated development of a replacement for the Leopards began immediately after they entered service in the West German Army. This was due to the Soviet Union and its allies introducing the advanced T-64 tank. Western designers, led by Paul Werner Krapke, were tasked with closing the gap with their potential adversary and creating a fully capable deterrent. Due to the arms race during the Cold War, the development process was personally overseen by the German Minister of Defense and future Chancellor Helmut Schmidt. Prototype testing was conducted not only in Europe, but also in extreme conditions in Canada and the US. The tests were carried out alongside the American XM1, which later became the M1 Abrams. In 1973, both countries agreed on the maximum possible unification of tank parts. Three years later, they conducted comparative tests of the prototypes. The Leopard was lighter than its competitor and demonstrated superiority in range and operational performance. The Bundeswehr adopted the tank in September 1977 and ordered 1,800 units. Series production was established at Krauss Maffei's facilities in Bavaria. The first Leopard II was delivered to the troops on October 25, 1979. After an export agreement for the Netherlands, around 45% of the production was transferred to Krupp Mack Maschinenbau GmbH in Kiel. By 1981, the companies were producing around 20 tanks per month. The tank's hull can be divided into three sections. The front houses the driver's compartment and fuel tanks. The turret, located in the middle, accommodates the tank commander, gunner, and loader. The rear contains the engine, air filters, and transmission. The tank is protected by multi-layered armor, consisting of plates of varying hardness, elastic, and non-metallic materials. The thickness of the roof armor is 40 mm, the sides 60-70 mm, the bottom 20 mm, and the rear up to 70 mm. There is also an option for additional shielding of certain blocks. The upper frontal armor of the hull is 640 mm thick, while the lower part is about 400 mm and sloped at a 45 degree angle. In modified versions, the armor was further strengthened. The loader's position is protected by 860mm armor plates, while the commander is covered by only 660mm of armor. The sides of the turret feature armor plates, 250mm thick. In the early versions of the Leopard 2, communication was handled by VHF radio stations SEM25 and SEM35. Later, engineers upgraded to digital equipment, the SEM8090, Additionally, modern versions are equipped with LITEF ground navigation systems, which include GPS modules. Key components of the tank are protected by an automated fire suppression system. The torsion suspension features shock absorbers and hydraulic springs, and the tracks are rubber-coated and reinforced. The tank is powered by a 12-cylinder diesel engine, the MB873 KF501, which generates 1,500 horsepower. It has a Rank HSWL 354 steering mechanism, paired with a 4-speed gearbox. These components are combined into a compact power unit with an electronic control system that increases efficiency and minimizes the risk of breakdowns. This configuration allows the power unit to be quickly swapped out, even in combat. 
The tank's crew consists of four members. Its length ranges from 9.67 m to 10.97 m. Its width is between 3.7 m and 3.76 m, and its height is between 2.79 m and 3.03 m, depending on the version. Without ammunition, the tank weighs between 52,000 and 60,000 kilograms, with a fully equipped weight of 55,150 to 62,500 kilograms. The turret alone weighs between 16 and 21 tons, and can rotate 360 degrees in 10 seconds. The fuel tanks can hold up to 1,160 liters of fuel, and the engine consumes about 210-230 liters of diesel per 100 kilometer. The tank can reach speeds of up to 68 kilometers per hour on highways, and reverse at up to 31 kilometers per hour. It has a ground clearance of 0.54 m, and the width of the tracks is 630 mm, exerting a ground pressure of 0.83 kg per centimeter torth. The Leopard 2 can cross trenches up to 3 meters wide, ford water obstacles up to 1.2 m deep, or up to 4 meters with special underwater engine equipment, and climb over 1.1 m walls. It has a range of about 500 to 550 kilometers. The turret houses a 120 mm smoothbore RH120 gun with a barrel length of either 44 or 55 calibers, depending on the version. It fires high explosive anti tank rounds, DM12, and armor piercing fin stabilized discarding sabot rounds, DM43 and DM53. The tank carries a total of 42 rounds, distributed around the hull. 15 rounds are stored in the rear for quick access, while the rest are in the front. A 7.62 mm MG3 machine gun accompanies the main gun, with another mounted on the turret. Interesting facts. Modern versions of the tank are equipped with a digital fire control system that automatically calculates the ballistic trajectory and selects the appropriate round type based on wind speed, direction, ambient temperature, and terrain features. It also adjusts for shooting at moving targets. Additionally, thermal imaging is used for nighttime, poor weather conditions, or camouflage targets. The tank commander has a 360-degree view thanks to six observation devices, triplexes, around the hatch. The gunner and loader each have one triplex, and the driver's compartment is equipped with three. The gunner uses the EMES-15 sighting system, which includes a stabilizer, thermal imager, 12x optics, and a laser rangefinder. If the primary device fails, an ATEX Fero Z18 sight is used as backup. The commander operates a Perry R17 panoramic periscope, offering a wide field of view, up to 27 degrees. Standard periscopes were originally linked to the gunner's sight, allowing the commander to use thermal imaging. However, the upgraded R17A2 model includes its own thermal imaging module with 4x, 12x, and 24x magnification for target acquisition. The base version, designated 2A0, was produced from 1979 to 1982, featuring an analog fire control system, FCS, standard radio, and an electrohydraulic gun stabilizer, WNAH-22. A total of 380 tanks were produced. From 1982 to 1984, 750 units of the improved 2A1 version were built. This version eliminated a faulty wind sensor, extended the periscope, standardized ammunition storage, added extra engine armor, and introduced the RPP-18 FCS control system. Between 1984 and 1985, 302. A3 units were made, fitted with digital radios, asbestos-free exhaust components, a three-color camouflage, and upgraded brakes. From 1985 to 1992, 695 units of the 2A4 version were produced. Subsequently, all earlier versions were upgraded to the 2A4 standard, which featured a digital FCS, automated fire suppression, reinforced armor, and an improved suspension. In 1989, a combat potential upgrade program began. It was divided into three phases, introducing design changes to enhance firepower and survivability. The result was the 2A5 version, featuring new armor, automated turret control, and thermal imaging for the tank commander, along with a combined navigation system. By 2002, 350 German and 330 Dutch tanks had been modernized. From 2001 to 2005, 225 units were upgraded to the 2A6 version, distinguished by an extended gun barrel, L55, 
which allows for more powerful rounds to be fired at ranges up to 5 kilometers. Other variants include the 2A6M, with reinforced bottom armor, 2A7, with improved thermal imaging, new command and communication systems, 2A7 Vi, with enhanced armor, 2PSO, an urban combat version, and experimental models like the 2A6EX, 2A4 Evolution, and MBT Revolution. Export versions have also been modified, resulting in models such as the Dutch 2NL, Swiss Panzer 87, Polish 2PL, Indonesian 2A4+, Singaporean 2SG, Canadian 2A4MCAN, Swedish Strav 122, and Danish 2A5DK. Additionally, various support vehicles, such as bridge layers, Panzer Schnellbrücke 2, Leguan 2L, recovery vehicles, Berger Panzer 3 Büffel, Weisant 2, self-propelled howitzers, Panzer Haubit 2000, mobile anti-aircraft systems, marksmen, and mine-clearing vehicles, are based on the Leopard 2 chassis. The Leopard 2 tanks were used during NATO's operations in Kosovo, with 28 units patrolling and protecting positions in Prizren, before being redeployed to North Macedonia. They remained in the Balkans from 1999 to 2001. The tanks were also deployed by the International Security Assistance Force during the conflict in Afghanistan. In 2007, an IED targeted a 2A6M, but the tank survived unscathed. In early 2008, a Danish Leopard 2 was involved in a battle near the Helmand River, and later that year, the tanks were deployed in Operation Red Dagger. Three Danish tanks were damaged by IEDs during the war, with one crew member killed and three others injured. Commanders credited these tanks with contributing significantly to the success of the campaign. Between summer 2016 and spring 2017, 30 Turkish II, a four tanks participated in Operation Euphrates Shield in Syria. Eight tanks were reportedly damaged. In 2018, one tank was destroyed in Afrin during Operation Olive Branch, with all crew members killed. Since June 2023, the Ukrainian armed forces have used Leopard 2 tanks in military operations. They are regularly targeted by Russian forces, and 12A6 was captured. Various Leopard 2 modifications are in service in 20 countries worldwide. Austria operates 54 units, Hungary purchased 13, and Germany uses and stores around 335 units. Greece has 353, Denmark modernizes and uses 44, and Indonesia has 103 tanks in its military. Spain acquired 317 units, Canada has 74, and Qatar operates 62. Interesting facts. The Leopard 2 is featured in video games such as Armored Warfare, Project Armata, War Thunder, and World of Tanks. It is considered one of the most commercially successful military vehicles in the world. However, the Netherlands had to sell 60 tanks due to high maintenance costs. Plans to resume production and sign agreements to supply tanks to Italy and Lithuania are underway. Currently, around 2,500 Leopard 2 tanks are in service globally, with over 3,600 units produced. Norway received 44 2A4s, Poland has 233 tanks, and Portugal's defence relies on 34 Leopard 2s. Singapore has about 96 operational units. Slovakia received 6 units, and expects 9 more as part of its rearmament process. Turkey has 316 tanks, while Ukraine has so far received 60 units. Finland uses and stores 200 Leopard 2s. The Czech Republic owns 3, but is set to receive 25 more. Switzerland has 230 tanks, and Sweden operates 110 units. Leopard 2 regularly occupies leading positions in international tank ratings. It is constantly being modernized and reworked. The range of ammunition for it is expanding, so it remains relevant and sells well. It has a slight advantage over most Russian vehicles in equipment, shooting accuracy, and combat survivability. However, as experience of use in Ukraine has shown, it does not create a total advantage on the battlefield. Now, do you think Leopard 2 has proved its worth in its career? Let us know in the comments. We discuss such interesting topics every day. Please like, share, and subscribe for more such stories in the future.